I want to agree that the, the, all the church that watch us here in the outside of the country with the peace of the Lord Jesus, we are here on the amphitheater and doing the broadcast of this Sunday school. We have a, a, a seminar in Domingos Martins, a fifth period in which a fifth period of the beginners, we have the participation of, of uh, more or less 3,000 people. A seminar in which the Lord blessed in a great way. And even many decided to remain there and continue this morning watching the broadcast with us in the morning of Domingos Martins. We are here this morning uh, giving a proceeding our study about the Word of God and the subject here is that is already uh, mentioned to the brethren about the Word of God. And at the beginning, we, we want to uh, live with you, my brethren. The, our first question regarding this uh, our Sunday school. Yes. Yeah, this question was given for this Sunday. And now we are going to give you the answer to what your brethren have already studied and had the opportunity throughout this week to, to study and find in the Bible. So now we are going to only give you the answer to the question that I was already given you, have, have already given you in, in the past. So to make it easy, we're going to give an example of, of what was asked. Uh, associated John chapter 15 uh, verse 26 and Luke 24 49 we're going to find the promise prophesied in John and confirmed on the text of Luke 24 49 this text in, of John 15 26 is a prophecy that says the following but when the helper comes home and look but Terry in the city of Jerusalem until you are en endowed with power from on high. So, and look, it speaks of the Lord Jesus when he was still with the disciples and there was still not the sacrifice. Jesus was still in this earthly ministry. Then he has a conversation with the disciples. He says, when the counselor comes, that comes from the part of the Father. So, this is the Lord Jesus telling the disciples. In the text of Luke 24, 49, it was uh, something that happens. And, and the resurrection, Jesus, Jesus resurrected, he says, Remain Jerusalem until you are re reinvested with the power. So here is the action of the Lord Jesus now to guide the disciples for the fulfillment of this prophecy. Now we have here the text that were given for you, brethren. I always remind Jesus speaking to his disciples is also speaking in his earth, earth ministry and now at this moment between resurrection and he's, he's rising to heaven so now in John 14 16 the prophet says the same, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever and the answer Jesus said to her woman why are you weeping who are you seeking so the great counselor is, is saying that Jesus is alive. And now John 14, 17, he says, For he dwells with you and will be in you. So the remaining of the Holy Spirit. And then Luke 24, 29, we see and the action saying, And he went in to stay with them. So now the permanent action of the Lord, as we, what, we was, what was prophesied, and now understand so forever with us so in the text in John 14 26 it, the Lord says the follow the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name he will teach you all things and the Lord says this Jesus says this and now Luke he says in beginning at Moses and all the prophets he exposed to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself so the Father will send, He will teach us, and now we see the action of Jesus in the teaching. Jesus resurrect now teaching the disciples. The other prophets in John 14, 27, 
peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. And Luke 24, 36. Now, as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. So the past, he says, remains, be with you. It will remain with you. In John 15, 26, But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, Jesus will send him the, the Counselor. And Luke 24, 49 says, But carrying the city of Jerusalem until you are endowed with power from on high. So this is the counsel that Jesus was going to send now in Jerusalem. You will be there in the moment of the prophets being fulfilled. The Holy Spirit will be will fill your hearts. And on the text, John 16, 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. And Luke 24, 39 says the following. Behold my hands and my feet, that it's myself. So Jesus says the truth. I'm going to die and on the third day I'll rise from the dead. And this temple will be destroyed, but on the third day I will be edified. So I said here, and here you see the fulfillment. And at the end, you see John 16, 17. A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Luke 24, 36. Now, as they said this thing, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. So in the wonderful way, in a little while, in the three days, now Jesus represents himself to them, showing that Jesus that was not seen, now he's being seen in this church with the disciples there, in the presentation of the Lord Jesus. Now, let's go. Now we're going to to enter into the subject of this Sunday School. We gave the answers of what was asked on last Sunday School, now we're going over the text for this Sunday School. And the question is the following. Did you know that the what scriptures mentioned for by Jesus refers to the Old Testament? Did you know that? Yes or not? And the reference of this word. Then you will see on the text you examine this scripture because you seek in them eternal life. And when Jesus is saying that in the uh, to the, his disciples making reference to the Old Testament. Did you know that? If you didn't know, the answer is yes. The reference of Jesus, he was mentioning the Old Testament. We didn't have the New Testament. Nothing had been written then because Jesus is still in doing his ministry. I greet you, brethren, with the peace of the Lord. Just uh, want to make a couple of remarks regarding the scripture. The word scripture is related to the Old Testament. In fact, Paul Peter refers to the scriptures in relation to the writings of Paul and his letters. But this word scriptures, it lost the meaning, the prophetic meaning, because now it was being going to be fulfilled in Jesus. So what was written the old the scriptures of the Old Testament it was for the Jews and not for the church and prophetically speaking. Now the gospel changed the meaning of scriptures because now now when Jesus is risen from the dead a new covenant is fulfilled. A new testament. There was the old testament where the word scriptures was only referring to the Old Testament. When he refers about me, he speaks prophetically of what the Jews, the religious of that time, didn't understand. Because he, the scriptures, the scriptures speak prophetic about him. Now, the faithful church, the church of all days, understands that scriptures as being prophetic. Everything that was prophesied in the Old Testament about the scriptures is what matters. It's not the letter. Uh, the letter is related to the law. The scripture, as it relates to the law, is left behind. So now its worth is the prophetical worth. So now the scripture that Jesus speaks of is on the fourth dimension, the fourth measure. And the other of the New Testament is on the fifth dimension, or the fifth measure. 
that only the revelation will matter to us here. The letter will serve as base, but the revelation will be the fundament of this scripture. So I'm going to hand the, the word back to the pastor so they can, may continue. So now we're going to go to the second question. Did you know? You know, the, the use of the, the garments and white garments and blue with stripes and black stripes and covers on the head, braids, bangs, and signs. They're, they're used today, still today, because they didn't accept the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus and his resurrection to this day. Did you know that all this stuff that, is, uh, that was used in the Old Testament, they still use it because they have not accepted the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus, the Savior, and his resurrection. Did you know that? If you didn't know, now you know. Because the answer is yes. Because all these things that are used, they try to cancel the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. And the answer here, Answer to the question, did you know? It's very important because in truth, in truth, the resurrection of Jesus canceled all this. The garments, um, striped clothing, the rings, everything belonged to the Old Testament. It's interesting that when Paul begins his teaching, a group rises up called Josiah uh, In this moment, uh, they were in the region of Galatia, a region close to the area where Paul was acting. And when Paul, Paul get, got there, a group of religions of that region, many, uh, have, uh, some have accepted Jesus, but now they try to go back to these elements and even Nicolaitism, which was a doctrine of Nicolai, and even the book of Revelation mentions it, the doctrine of the Nicolaitists that I abhor, they, uh, they allowed all this, all this, uh, all the liturgy of the Old Testament to enter into the life of the church. And Paul said, no, no, it's not like this, because we are no longer in, under the law. You know, all this, all this thing was to remove the worth of the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. If we continue doing this and allowing this into Christianity, we were going to be saying this, Jesus didn't have to resurrect. Because this is the human effort, as human appearance, the garment. Uh, and Jesus speaks of those that wanted to show off with long garments, and Jesus speaks of the, the bangs that, that were used by the religious to show that they were more holy than the others. And he is, he doesn't like any of it. And there is a group called the Judaism that didn't understand the gospel. They are getting confused with the law, and Paul said, it's not like this. Things are not that way. This is over. This was left behind. It remained as the meaning of the scriptures that this cannot cancel the sacrifice of Jesus with his resurrection. So, when the resurrection of Jesus, these elements here, all this liturgy could just vanish because now the adoration was not from it's not exterior, it's not actors, exterior acts, but it was something that was being processed in the heart through the Lord Jesus. and. And especially in fellowship. Fellowship happened here in these elements here. So, the garments. Why did you put in incense? Because of the smell of, of the blood that was in the altar. That's why they need to use an incense. So now this... So the garments of the, the prophet, the priest, they needed to do all this because they wanted, they weren't in the presence of a God. They needed to hide themselves because it was a holy God. No, no, we don't need any of it because in the gospel we don't need this. 
it's just showing options if you brought think you you want to put all this garment all this stuff there's nothing wrong with that but this is old testament and you are canceling the sacrifice of jesus and this is not what the brethren that are hearing us all the servants of the lord that are throughout the world will accept the resurrection is the action the practical practical action in which everything all, all of it is as being replaced if you want to dress up with a shirt with stripes nothing wrong with that but the fact is that jesus with his sacrifice cannot be replaced did you know that no you know no pastor so now let's go to the next question so it's the same uh, affirmation you didn't know when the veil was raped from top to bottom it was an exact moment in which jesus was entering the holy of holies carrying our sins and removing the obstacles for our fe direct fellowship with god and, and giving a dispensation the priesthood as an uh, intermediary between God and man. Do you know that? So the answer would be affir affirmative. When the veil was raped is the moment in which he had to in the Holy of Holies to say now that they place a new priestlyhood order. So now Jesus is now our priest and now and through him we enter into, into the Holy of Holies. This word is very interesting because the word is as fellowship and this fellowship that the Lord opened up is a path that He opened up so that we may have fellowship with God. It is no longer necessary for a priest to be the intermediary between our relationship with God. Now we are priests of God. The holy priest, the high priest, entered once in the Holy of Holies. The priests remain outside here. Inside there, no, no, only the high priest would enter once a year. He entered there. And what the Lord did, he placed it here and opened up the way so we can enter. So the, the curtain was ripped and now we can enter in the Holy Holies through the blood of Jesus. That's why we plead for the blood, the blood of Jesus to enter in the Holy of Holies. Lord, we plead for the blood of Jesus because your blood was poured out. So now you allow us to enter. We are no longer a people that are in a profane place. Now we enter in the place of the holiest because we receive the blessing of what? The Holy Spirit of the Lord in our lives. We are not, we became holy. We turn ourselves holy because the Lord turned us holy. That's why the word holiness means separation. The blood separated us from the world, so now we can enter here, and we can enter on the holy holies. Now we can uh, offer glorification and sacrifice. Uh, our sacrifice, adoration. This is what we're doing this year. Glorify the name of the Lord, because we enter into this place, because Jesus opened up this curtain for us, and and as the holy of holies, He carried our sins. And as the high priest, he entered and carried our sins. Now, let's go for the next question. John 14, 6, when the Lord Jesus, Jesus said to him, uh, I was the path, what path he was speaking about, mm, prophetically speaking on the Old Testament. And the answer was already given here. The answer was already given here. No, no, it's just Hebrews 10, 20. It's just, there's a reference. I'm going to give you two two minutes so as we enter here when Jesus answered that he was a path perfectly speaking he was referring to what he was referring to what the answer is uh, 10 20. So then the path was open for the Holy of Holies. Jesus said, oh, What path do I am? And the 
path that was opened to the Holy of Holies, which is the presence of God. So now glorify the name of the Lord. It's interesting that because this aspect is prophetic, it is the holy. They present it here as a path. So, in fact, when he was prophetically speaking, he's speaking on the new, new and living path. It's not only a, a path that was in which his peop the people were going to enter, and he, but he opens with his resurrection, with his death, actually. He opens the path, because the path of the Holy. So no, please, if you can, the, the, the no, no, the tabernacle, yeah. So and the curtain was there. So when Jesus entered, he entered by the Spirit, because he was in cover. When he gave the shout, everything is finished. What happened? The angel came and cut the veil. So this path was open so that those that were here, it's like the church, like the priest, and now they enter here in the Holy of Holies through this path. So that's why I say um, the path of truth and life, nobody can come to the Father but through me. But because he is the one who opened up this path. So this path is opened by him. Now we can go back to the text. I'm going to read the text here. I'd like you to read. We can stand up and read the Bible, <coughs> respecting this great one of the Lord in our lives. We can read Hebrew 10.20. Is it already here? The, 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 read with you. By a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil. You remember the veil? The veil was ripped from top to bottom, and now he entered the Holy of Holies. He carried our sins, what the high priest didn't want. They didn't want to die for us. And that's why they are the cynics made of gold. That is his flesh. So it was his flesh. So his death came in function of the hurting of the, the hurting of his body. So the flesh is over. Now the veil is ripped. There is nothing matters anymore. The veil was removed. The curtain is opened, and now we enter with Jesus into the Holy of Holies. Now you, the church may be seated. Now let's go for the next question. The fifth question. Identify and relate the secrets and prophetic signs found in the text of Genesis 22.4 and Numbers 10.33 and Acts 2.42 and with the doctrine of more death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Genesis 22.4, Numbers 10.33 and Acts 2.42, related to the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And the signs that are related to this. So in the secrets and uh, signs, prophetic signs. Three minutes, and we will come back. So as we return here with the answer, to the question, which is identify and relate the secrets and signs, prophetic signs found in the text of Genesis 22:4, Numbers 10:33, Acts 2:42, with the doctrine of the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So, in the text of Genesis 22:4, it says, "When Abraham carrying Isaac, he said, on the third day, the third day is." It's a moment in which Abraham was carrying his son going to the mount. And 10.33, it speaks of the uh, path of three days. And when the ark was carried, when the people began, it gave, proceeded in walking the desert. And Acts 2.42 speaks of the doctrine of the apostles and the fellowship. And this text we see from the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, uh, highlighting this text that we that I speak of the three days and the doctrine established here. So let us go 
let us go for the next question, which is going to be our next last question. You can go. We're waiting for the projection. Oh, here it is. Knowing that with the three elements that were in the inside of the ark, a prophetically present on the text of Revelations 14, 6 and 7, mystery, fear, and glory, associate the elements to the expressions mentioned in the book, in the text of Revelations. The, the elements that are inside they are prophetically present in the uh, in Revelations 14, 6 and 7. Ministry, fear and glory associated to the expressions mentioned. So we're going to have three minutes for this answer. So um, we have to associate in Revelations the three expressions. Ministry, fear and glory. So now going to the answer, we know that the three elements there are worn in the inside of the ark are prophetically present on the text of Revelations 14, 6 and 7. Ministry, fear and glory. Associate those elements uh, to the expressions mentioned in the text of Revelations. So the answer we have the rod of Aaron, the table of the law and the manna, the three elements that were contained. The rod speaks of the ministries which is the Holy Spirit that brings to us revelation of the secret. And then the tables of the Lord speaks of the fear, fear of the, the, the Father, which is related to the Father. And the other element, the manna, is related to the, the glory of the Lord and the Son. The mystery, the fear and glory related, related to the, is the Holy Spirit, the Father and Son, the, all the elements that were inside of the ark. My bread. I do like to make a small observation. Is the first is that the subject that is being brought here is going to close because to come to an end because in truth we are contemplating Sunday school inside of the book of Revelations because because from the last the end of the last year and the beginning of this year. The prophetic for this year was to glorification to the name of the Lord Jesus. And we open up a parenthesis for a period called the period of uh, the Easter. The celebration everybody does in one way is, is, is nice, is historic, and everything is fine. But now what happened to us? We took the subject of the Old Testament we placed now in the New Testament. Now the prophetic meaning to show one thing here, the glorification to the Lord Jesus, the glorification that is prophetic. It was not simply a law that was in the Old Testament. It's not a celebration that Jesus was dead, but is Jesus risen from the dead. So we're going to see here an association of the revelation of Jesus glorified with this prophetic moment in which we see the whole history, biblical history in the Old Testament pointing to the glorification of Jesus. So the glorification of Jesus is in function of his resurrection. He, he overcame all the obstacles, the Roman Empire, the ideologies he overcame all his enemies including religion and now he established a new covenant through his resurrection now what's left to us fellowship fellowship why because in, in the resurrection of jesus the holy spirit began to manifest in his place not as a substitute but as an element that was necessary for the life of the creation, which was his connection between eternity with man. Man was not ready to go to, uh, needed to go to eternity, but he didn't have this connection. And, and now the blood of Jesus was the agent of uniting man with God, which is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit 
is fulfilled in fellowship. There is no fellowship without Jesus. There is no fellowship without the presence of the Holy Spirit. So it doesn't matter if we speak of Jesus, if the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, is not in the meeting. It may be two, three, or in the church. It doesn't matter. So it's very important to remember that nothing was left outside of the project for glorification of the name of the Lord Jesus. So we're going to close showing the following. What was inside of the ark that Israel didn't see? He had the rod, the rod of Aaron, spoke of the mystery that was inside of the ark, the mystery of the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to see. The second was the table of the Lord, which was the fear of the Father, the, war, the living word. Now man is in the presence of the living word. Now he's in, in the presence of a, a mystery that has been revealed. It's Jesus revealed in life. And now his glory manifests as the bread of life, the one that was risen from the dead. So the glory of Jesus and we're speaking on the Old Testament is now is is being based on the Old Testament on what was prophetic so what was left as letter was left behind now we have the prophetic and Israel didn't understand what that meant they could not look inside and those that looked inside died because it was a mystery which was for the church so the mystery now we're going to go back here in Revelations 14, 6, and 7, and I saw a new angel fly, and he would bring the eternal gospel, and we're going to see it, which was the mystery of the Holy Spirit, of the gospel. This gospel is the mystery. And in second place is the fear. In this mystery, the two elements that compose this mystery is the fear, fear to God, to his living word, not the letter, not only about this, but a living word, that, that the Holy Spirit that controls it, because the eternal gospel is a gift that comes through the Holy Spirit. And now, and in Jesus through his resurrection, which was an operation of the Holy Spirit. So, the ones that were the brothers are worried about the revelation. Why are we talking about revelation? This is a continuation. The word is a continuation. And you may may be okay because soon we're going to go back to the book of Revelation. You may even go back and rem remember several things. There are many things that we need to do. And now closing, in closing, there are workers and, and pastors. They receive all the information that was necessary. Here, there was to each pastor, so they may have a great understanding for the church. That's why we're going to go uh, a little farther on the time, because they're going to take care of this today and tomorrow, and the sisters and Saturday with the youth. Everything is here, so that though what was not able to be we were not able to do this at this moment. My brother, the satellite is this vehicle in which the pastor is the key. <coughs> if the pastor does not do the mediation between what was platter on the wall, with, uh, if he doesn't remove it, can so the satellite has no worth if, because he didn't understand him. He has to understand. He has to study the Bible. He has to pray. <coughs> we are receiving many blessings because of the work of the pastors. Those that understood that the satellite is just a sequence. I'm going to give a final detail here. We had a meeting with the women. The women minister. Uh, class was for those that went to Manahim for the women you cannot have a, a church because a church doesn't have the infrastructure, doesn't have bathroom doesn't have, doesn't have um, kitchen and when the presbyter sets up a date the others are supposed to 
everything else has to be left behind. If there's no money, no, you remain in the church if there is no money. But you don't have. You have to understand that thirty sisters go to to the church and spend the whole day in using one bathroom without food. No, the, the women came on only on the afternoon, so they lost everything. So the result, the the ones that came and the two that came and they had a blessing of having, they have been ordained and knowing all the things and everything, being placed in the right place. They are receiving the benefit. I heard of a church that there were twenty for visitors in Sunday school. And at night, they were all back. Brother, that's what has to be done. We're trusting the, sis the women because they, the 20% of their pop the population in the Sunday school because without the word, it's just conversation. No, here is the living word it has to be given to everyone here. So, uh, as this observation has been made, do not turn off the satellite. A uh, sister came to us, why do they turn off the the little uh, video that plays at the end? The little video is at the end. Uh, it's part. There are people that, are being, that became Christians just because of the little video that plays at the end. Nobody has the right to remove this blessing of the church. Nobody should be tired with the, the little video that's played at the end. The little video is, is a sign of respect in which the, the subject are being given inside of Revelation. It's what, what the church needs, the fear and glory, the presence of God. I'm just seeing that the people have to be in fellowship. The word is being read and the worship and revelation. It's the beginning of the service, so you bread that is being that is turning off, he cannot do this. He doesn't have the right to do this. You don't understand it? We have a group of youth in kind of sick. He turned it on. He, he watching from Kariasika. 300 youth are watching from Kariasika. They spent the night there on money to watch in satellite. Sadly, we had to come here down to do the satellite here. But our desire was to be with our brethren, Kariasika. Yes, I'm almost 300. Now, 300 youth. The women are. Awakening the church begin to awaken those that have the understanding, but those that want go at the lunch and do, and they go home. They they go home to have lunch and then what day they come back. This understanding has to exist. We are dealing with simple things. We have the responsibility to speak with them, even though the time is over. There's another thing. Or to visit our brother Andre and his wife from Brazil, Sister Elsa. Speak on Brazil because Brazil, yeah, so yeah, they want everything for Brazil. Everything there is great. The pastor there, they want even to canonize a pastor because the pastor is so good. It's true. There's a pastor that should be canonized. But we, since we don't have this, it's going to be for the next, for the next generation. You see, my brethren, we have a mission in Amazon, and there were 400,000 400, access and for a mission in other communities, Caricatuba, Jerusalem, not Jerusalem, from Israel, it's from here in Brazil. The small cities, small villages. The pastor that from other churches that are interested, 2,400 visitors. We have, therefore, my brethren, this blessing of this work that has been made in Amazon. want to send our, my embrace to these women because her, their work is being a blessing. We are going to continue to help the women. Because if you have any problem, contact us. We are going to help you with whatever necessity you may have. We don't have a necessity to do if you have if you have a money for a specific 
reason when the Lord created Jerusalem. Nobody gave war to Jerusalem, so they destroyed Jerusalem. If the people don't want Jerusalem, they don't want to adore the Lord, they destroy Jerusalem, sell it. We cannot. Uh, the, those are resources that we have, and the greatest blessing we have here, 2,000 women, servants of the Lord, no one, even, not a single one left a, a meeting. If the women are suffering, I want to leave it very clear. My word is this. It doesn't change because our, re, uh, our function is to preserve the ministries. The pastor is anointed, but he's ordained for my function. And when you, he does not fulfill his ordination, he's, he's uh, under subordination for the ordination. The word says that to the angels that didn't accept the ordination of the Lord, that he placed them in the darkness. If there's a religion, if there's a way to be done, or, but the work, we're going to zeal for it. There's a people that is interested, and the work is going to grow. We come to the ending. I'm going to pray now for this closure, asking um, forgiveness for the brethren that didn't like, but we're going to close it now. If the pastor wants later on to have a meeting with the brethren, so the subject are here, there is a lot of stuff th that we have enough message for, th through messages. Pray, now let's pray. Lord, bless your people. Stretch a blessing and open up their minds so they may understand the prophetic moments that we live in. We ask that your blessing be upon your people in that the uh, uh, disappointment of people may may not uh, the, the, your work may the work of the Holy Spirit may be fulfilled many are pleading and and cannot be forgotten Lord place your hand upon your the youth the church uh, adolescents teacher of Sunday school when I ask your name the grace the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the power and the love of God, the sweet and tender consolations with all His Spirit be upon you, my brethren, with the whole people of God, now and forever. Amen. Now the pastor may say goodbye to the people. Amen. Now we're going to have a children. Our time is pretty late, but the children are going to praise the name of the Lord.
I'm gonna invite the church to stand up. Was a little word. Would like if your brother, if your boy could have we could speak about what was taught here. And the Holy Spirit was the Lord sent the Holy Spirit and now we need to remain in Jerusalem so we will see the blessing. We went to Amos and left Jerusalem, then came back. And the word is for our days because the Holy Spirit and Jesus, He opened up the veil, he ripped the veil. There's a song that says, Beyond the veil I want to enter. Because, because Jesus removed this veil where we have direct access to eternity through Jesus. The blood of Jesus, what did it do? In His death, the veil was ripped and now we have direct access. Before it was only the high priest. Only the high priest had the right to enter. But now we have direct access to enter to the Holy of Holies. Jesus did this for us. Amen. Now the children are going to kneel down. We're going to pray with the laying of hands. The children, the intermediary, and the adolescents. One of the brethren may pray. Let's pray, closing our service. Eternal Father, at this moment, place your presence, the service tonight, Sunday school, that you may speak to our hearts, that we may understand, Lord, uh, the opening up the, the veil through your death. Now we have better access to eternity. Lord, Father, now ask you to be with us and bring us back so we can Praise your name on the evening service. Receive our adoration. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service is over. The meeting of Group C. Only Group C. Right? Amen, my brother.